That was just advertising for her to advertise oh, more. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, you all can be seated. Well, praise God, everybody. Uh, it is an honor to be able to stand before you today on Father's Day. I honor every father. I honor my father. And uh, I salute you this morning. <laughs> and I believe we have a good time. If you, can you go ahead and start my 35 so I can be on point? Um, I believe if you're a new father today, you'll get something. If you're a, a veteran father I believe that God will speak to you. And if you don't have a father, you know, the Bible says that God is a father to the fatherless. Yes. And we, God has given you a spiritual father. He's given you a spiritual mother. We can't be spiritual orphans. Nobody can raise themselves. And so take some of these things and apply it as it pertains to a relationship with your spiritual father. So <clears throat> I want to give you, I was thinking about attributes of my dad attributes that he has and qualities that really have stood out to me throughout my life. And uh, I can't get to all of them, but I'm going to point out four that I want to give to you today. <clears throat> Number one, a father. What is a father? Number one, a father knows his purpose. A father knows his purpose. Turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And I'm going to go ahead and start reading Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. He says there, God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, over every creeping thing upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. In the image of God created he him. In the image of God created he him. We learn in John 4, 24, that God is a spirit. So God duplicated himself. God made a copy of himself. God put himself in the earth and called that man. You are a spirit. And then God gave him everything he needed. In the next verse we see where God said, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. That was the blessing. That was the anointing. Man of God, today I tell you, you have been given everything you need to operate and to function in life. You are not inadequate. Everything you need, God has already equipped you with. If you've got five kids today, God is well able to provide for those five kids. It doesn't matter who you are. You could have flunked in the third grade. God says, I have crowned you and given you wisdom. The mind of Christ is in operation in your life today. And there's nothing you can't not do with the word of God. All you need is faith in God. Know your purpose today. Understand who you are and what your position is in the kingdom of God. You've been given everything you need to operate and dominate in this life. The Bible says he put all things under our feet. Go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 2. And I'll read verse 6. Hebrews chapter 2. In order to be a father, you must first be a man of God. Now, a man of God isn't just a pastor. A man of God just isn't an apostle or a bishop. If you have received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, if you have relationship with the Heavenly Father, if you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, sir, you are a man of God. And the anointing rests on the, uh, on the inside of you. The anointing rests upon you. I declare unto you, open your mouth and begin to prophesy in your house. I declare unto you, open your hands and begin to release the presence of God. You are anointed today, praise God. God's plan is upon your life. His hand is upon your life. And he wants to use you. He wants to speak through you. He wants to love through you. He wants to do great and mighty things through you. Rise up today, man of God. You are anointed. Know your purpose today in the name of Jesus. Hebrews 12, 5, Paul said, I'm going to quote it. Paul says, uh, uh, don't run away from the instruction of your father. He says, don't faint. In other words, don't pass out whenever you get corrected. A real father will bring correction. And there's a difference between correction and condemnation. 
My generation, for some reason, doesn't understand that. We think that when we're getting corrected, we're getting put down or don't judge me. There's a difference between getting correction. Condemnation is saying you're not good enough. Condemnation is saying you're not worthy. Condemnation is saying you'll never amount to anything. Correction says, hey, here's the mistake that you made. And here's how you want to avoid that in the future. And here's how you do that. Here's how you miss those pit stops. See, correction is always going to give you a tool. Correction is always going to give you the solution. Correction is always going to bring healing and bring wholeness. If you go out here today and say, you know what, I want to go to Ballantyne. And you go out and you hang a right. And, and they say, hey, you don't want to go right. You need to go left if you're going to Ballantyne. Oh, you can't tell me. you judging me. Well, well go ahead. It's going to take you a long time to get to Ballantyne. We can't run from correction. Correction is not bad. Chastisement is not hurtful. It is for our good. Solomon says, bind the instruction of your father around your neck. He said, write them upon the tablet of your heart because it will keep you. It will preserve you. It will show you in the way you are to go. We cannot run from the instruction of our, of our fathers. We've put men down. Men have been put down. They've been cast to the side. They, we, we, they've been told they can't do certain things. The devil is a lie. Greatness is on the inside of you. Daddy can change a diaper too. Daddy can feed a bottle too. Quit taking that to his mama. Let daddy handle some things too. He, he's more than able and well equipped to handle any situation. Why? Because he's been anointed. Daddy can cook too. Yes, he can. Daddy can go to the PTA meetings too. Ain't nothing wrong with daddy. Daddy's got everything because that man of God has been anointed to lead that household in the way that it should go. We've got a 2021 movement of women's rights and I'm, I'm an independent woman and I got it going on and, 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 and we're putting men down and you, you can't be lifted up and then put somebody down at the same time. Now we're going to honor men today. I honor you, sir. I salute you, sir. You are somebody. God is not done with you yet. Greatness is on the inside of you. You have the mind of Christ. Excellence is on the inside of you. You are loved. You are not forgotten. You are not put down. You are not somebody who's been cast to the side and doesn't anybody love. It doesn't matter what you came from or who you are or what you've gone through. God says today, I make all things new in your life. You stand strong and you stand tall. You lead your family. Don't allow some devil of disobedience or rebellion to put you in Lodabar. Don't punk out and don't wig down. No, you pick your head up today and square your shoulders up and you continue to stand fast. You continue to speak that word instant in season. Don't you quit. Don't you cave in. Don't you give up. No, no. God has anointed you. You are the leader. Yes, you are the head in the name of Jesus. Just because we say man is the head doesn't mean it's, it's, it's control, doesn't mean it's manipulation. Just because we use words like honor and respect and submit doesn't mean somebody trying to beat you upside the head. But I respect and I honor the position God has put this man of God in my life. It is for my good, it's not for my hurt. He said, let it be well with you. He didn't give you an option. He didn't say, well, only honor if your dad did right. He didn't say, well, only honor your dad if, uh, if, if he didn't leave. He didn't say, only honor your dad if, if he loved you. No, he said, honor your father and your mother so that it can be well with you. It ain't got nothing to do with him. Oh, but you don't know what he did to me. He left me. He, let it go. Forget those things that are behind. I, I curse bitterness in you in the name of Jesus. I curse hate in the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost sets you free today. Release your father. Release him. God's given you a new daddy. He's got a new family, as he just said. Let it go. He didn't know any better. He didn't know what he was doing. He may have been a drunk, but God still says, I want you to love him. He may be out in the streets today, but God says, don't look at him through the eyes of the world. Look at him through the eyes of faith. Fix your mouth. That's one problem. And speak the blessing over him and call those things that be not as though they were. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 2 and verse, verse 6. But one is certain place testified saying, what is man? Who is this creation? What is a daddy? What is a father? Who are mindful of him? You made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. 
and put all things in subjection under his feet. Man of God, Father, you have been crowned today as a man of God. You walk in a position of authority. You walk in a position of dominion. And I declare unto you today, take up your mantle of dominion, take up your mantle of authority, and begin to walk in it in the name of Jesus. Praise God. So the first attribute is a, a man of God, a father, a real man of God, understands his position. Number two, he walks in integrity. He walks in integrity. What is integrity? Integrity is consistency. Integrity is doing what's right when no one is around. Integrity says, I'm keep on loving even though I'm not being loved. Integrity says, I'm going to hug even when I'm not getting hugs. Man, integrity says, I'm going to continue to provide and buy things even when I'm not being appreciated. Even when you're getting walked over, even when you're getting looked over and passed over, integrity says, I'm going to remain constant, instant, in season and out of season. Some of you all don't know what it is to be a real man of God. Some of you don't know what it is and what the responsibility is to provide for your family, to walk by faith and trust God, to hear from God. That's a high responsibility. Man of God, I salute you today. You came to church and braved the rain, got in these blue chairs. Man, God is pleased with you. He says, well done. God is not mad at you. God is not angry with you and wives and children and, and cousins, whoever you are. Man, stroke that man. Encourage him. Lift him up. Let him know what a good father he is. Let him know what a good job he's doing. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much he appreci you appreciate him. He needs to hear that. He needs to feel your love. He needs to feel your appreciation. Stop talking down about him. He didn't do that and he didn't get this bike. No, he's doing the best that he can under the spirit of Almighty God. He's in one season right now, but if you'll trust God will take him to the next season and the next season and the next season. You've been crowned today with glory and honor. Walk in integrity. Men, if you don't do anything, you got to walk in integrity. You got to be a man of your word. We got to trust you. We got to have confidence in you. We got to know that everything is going to be okay, that when daddy shows up, daddy's got everything under control. If you tell him you're going to be there at three o'clock, be there at three o'clock. If you said, Pastor, I'm going to come help you, keep your word. Don't be flaky. Don't be up and down and in and out. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Be a, integrity is all you got. The Bible says a good name is to, be, is to be had. Be a man of integrity. Integrity will keep you. Integrity will uphold you. Integrity will guide you. Integrity will preserve you. Integrity will get you home even when you don't want to go home. Integrity will have you calling your wife and saying, hey, baby, do you need anything? I'm on my way home. Integrity will shut down the, the little foxes. Stay in integrity. Live in integrity. God will bless that. God will honor that. You don't need anybody's approval. God is looking. God is watching. I think sometimes we forget that that God is watching. He's the one keeping every tally. He's dotting every I and crossing every T. Your living holy is not in vain. Your praying is not in vain. Your coming to church is not in vain. Your fasting is not in, in vain. God will bless you. He will bless the work of your hands. Stay faithful. Stay committed. Be instant in season, out of season. Paul said, none of these things move me. No height, no depth, no principality, no power, no rebellious child, no nagging woman. Nothing will separate me from the word of God. Gird up your loins with truth. Put your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Put on your loins with truth. Take up your helmet of salvation. Some of us cocked to the side today, but that's all right. Get, get your sword of the spirit with the word of God and begin to fight and begin to fight that devil. You are more than a conqueror through him that loved you. You are more than a conqueror through him that loved you. You are not weak. You will not die, but you shall live. You will live in the spirit and you will declare the work of the Lord. Yes, sir. Happy Father's Day. Yes, sir. Blessed Father's Day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God ain't mad at you. It doesn't matter how many, you, you, you could have flunked third grade, you could have went bankrupt, you could have gotten divorced three times. God is not holding it against you. Man, that stuff is behind. It is past. God's a just man gets up seven times and keeps on going. You keep on going. Launch that business again. Write the book again. Go back to the car lot again. Check your credit score again. If God be for you, bless God, no man can be against you. Walk by faith, live by faith, eat by faith, sleep by faith, dance by faith. 
There's something that happens and something shakes. You see, the attack isn't against you. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and powers. The attack isn't against you, sir. The attack is against your destiny. The attack is against the promise that God has put on the inside of your life. That wife who doesn't want to really jail with you, man, that's not an attack against you. Don't take that personal. That's the enemy trying to dissuade you and discourage you. A stepchild, I don't even want to call it stepchild, but a child that's in your house that you didn't birth that doesn't want to flow with the vision, that's an attack against the anointing upon your life. And you can't quit. You got to understand that you're dealing with the spirit. And if you will speak and cast that spirit out, it must obey you. Don't you quit and don't you get discouraged. There are many times that I probably kicked and bucked against my father and didn't want to really understand completely what he was trying to say, but he never quit. He never quit. He never backed down. He never compromised and said, well, okay, this time I think I'll let you do. No, no, this is what the word says, and we're not compromising. So you either strap up or get out. Yes, sir. God is with you. God is for you today. And he's given you the assignment to lead your house. And we lead it according to the word of God. And there is no compromise outside of the word of God. First Peter chapter one, verse 13. First Peter chapter one and verse 13. He says, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober, be single-minded, be focused, and hope to the end of the grace that has been brought unto you as obedient children. Don't fashion yourself according to the lusts of your ignorance. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't allow the world to dictate to you how you treat your fathers. But as he which hath called you is holy, is holy, so be holy. When you do step one, when you understand your, your purpose, when you become a man of God, integrity becomes easy. Integrity becomes your personality. Integrity becomes who you are. And that's what the attack is all about. You see, man, if you fail, the family will fail. If you quit, the family will quit. If you give up, we leave our children and our family to ruin. So no matter how many times you find yourself repeating yourself, keep repeating yourself. Keep speaking that word. Keep casting the vision over and 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 over again. Gird up the loins of your mind today. He says the strength will be renewed as the eagles. That's why you got to stay fresh in the presence of God. There's nothing like a daddy who is anointed. You can't be, I don't care what anybody says, you can't beat a real man of God who is anointed and understands who he is in the kingdom of God. I don't care what you might say, you may have a tambourine, but there's something that shifts in the atmosphere when a man will take his hands and clap God. There's something that shifts and breaks in the atmosphere when a man will take his feet and begin to leap and say hallelujah, thank God, who won't be ashamed who won't be afraid to say glory in the house of God. Things will begin to change and shift. If you will lift your voice like a trumpet, cry aloud and spare not. I tell you, you can drive a race strife. You can drive out bitterness. You can drive out anger with the words of your mouth, man of God. You are anointed. Yes, you are. You are called. You are appointed for such a time as this. There ain't no teenager that can, that can buck against the presence of God. There's no woman who can buck against the presence of God. There's no man that can go against the presence of Almighty God. Get anointed, sir. Stay anointed, sir. And watch that thing shift and change in the name of Jesus. You can't combat it against the flesh. You can't combat it listening to Steve Harvey. You can't combat it listening to what the world says. You can't combat it doing social media and posting, but well, what should I do and what advice do you have? No, pray in the Holy Ghost. All you need to do is say, and the Holy Ghost will begin to download unto you mysteries. There is creative ability on the inside of you. Mysteries are being released to you. Dreams are being released to you. Witty ideas and witty inventions are being released to you. If you are a son of this house, entrepreneurship is being released into you in the name of Jesus. Catch that vision. Catch that anointing. Don't sit. Don't hate. Don't get offended. But I say I want to glean. I want to receive 
from the anointing I'm going to pull because it flows up on me. Be strong in the Lord. <clears throat> Father's Day is cast aside. You don't even see commercials for Father's Day. We want to celebrate mom. Hi, mom. On, on the athletes and on the television. Mom, you're the real MVP. No, daddy the MVP too. Daddy, daddy, daddy took me to piano lessons after he would work and paint it for 15 hours a day. Daddy taught me how to ride a bike. Daddy taught me how to wash my, wash my body. Daddy taught me how to pray. He taught me how to balance a check, how to write a check. He taught me how to sew. He taught me how to drive. Everything I know how to do, my father taught me. Mark your children in the name of Jesus. You are something special. If you are out of relationship with your children, get back into relationship. Don't let that baby mama keep you from seeing your children. No, you go get them. You go breathe life into them. You go plant that seed into them. You go stick a word into them and prophesy into them and point them into their future. Number three, a man of God, a father, lives daily in worship. He lives daily in worship. I was so blessed. My father took our family out of town. What a man of God. What a blessing to say, family, we're going to go and we're going to relax and we're just going to enjoy fellowship with one another. That's a blessing. That's a, that's a blessing. I pray. It was a blessing to me, praise God. Anyway, uh, I got up <laughs> in the morning, and I got up to pray. And my father was already up. And he was in the shower, and he was singing in the spirit. And it just took me all the way back to 20 years ago when I was at home, how his relationship with God still has not changed. I can't tell you the impact it had on my life to hear my father at 5 o'clock in the morning praying in the Holy Ghost and singing in the Spirit. I can't tell you the impact it had on my life at 11 o'clock at night, he'd still be in his closet praying in the Holy Ghost and making confessions. I can't tell you the impact it had upon my life when we were driving on the way to school and he would give me lessons. People talk about, oh, you understand the scripture. Well, that started when I was five years old, and he say, memorize this scripture. Give me, a, give me a verse, and I'd say the reference. he give me the reference, I'd give him the verse. That's why the Bible's on the inside of me. Not because I'm somebody great. Not because God just said, ooh, look at Terrell. No, I had a father who said, I'm going to put the word of God in this boy, and God's hand is upon his life, and I'm going to make sure I do my part. You better not quit, sir. They're dependent upon you, sir. They need you, sir. Mark chapter 5 and verse 22, and behold, there came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus was his name. And when he saw him, when Jairus saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. Now Luke 8 tells us that Jairus was already present. He was waiting in the crowd for Jesus to come across the Sea of Galilee. And verse 23 tells us, and he besought him. He sought Jesus out. He didn't let the crowd keep him away from getting to Jesus. He pushed through the crowd. He said, I know I have somebody, a man of God, I got to go see because he has something that I need. And this man, Jairus, didn't allow anything to keep him from getting to Jesus. A man of God says, I will seek and I will find the presence of God. I will lock myself in my closet and I will not come out until I get a breakthrough. I will not stop until I hear from God. Man of God, you have to seek. God, even when you don't understand, even when you can't hear or see clearly, seek the face of God and everything you need will be added unto you. Everything you need, there's, there's blessings evermore in the presence of Almighty God. He said, my daughter is dead. She's at the point of death. Come, verse 23, lay your hands on her that she may be healed. This man of God was speaking faith. He was already declaring, I don't care what my daughter's situation looks like. All I know is that in the presence of Jesus, everything will be all right. You can be going through a financial issue today, but in the presence of God, everything will be all right. You can be going through a, a layoff today. Don't worry, sir. Don't fret. In the presence of God, everything will be all right. God is with you. God is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He has equipped you. He has trained you. He has crowned you with his anointing. He has crowned you with his power. It doesn't matter how dark your skin is. It doesn't matter how nappy your skin is. Can't no white man hold me back today. I'm a son of the living God. 
Can't no Mexican man hold me back today. I serve the Father who is, holds the keys in his hands. If God be for me, no man can be against me. He will open doors no man can shut. He will shut doors no man can open. God is great and greatly to be praised. And his spirit resides on the inside of you. Gird up the loins of your truth today and begin to operate as a man of almighty God. Get that doubt out of your mouth. Get that unbelief out of your mouth. It doesn't matter who your grandfather was. It doesn't matter where my, we came from slaves. No, we didn't. We came from Jehovah almighty God. We are in a brand new family. Ain't no Juneteenth. I was set free 2,000 years ago. You're not gonna bring me down to a level of, of socialism. No, 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 I'm not gonna go there. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Don't let them trick you. Don't be duped. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth, sir. And while he yet spake, verse 35, there came a ruler of the synagogue who said, your daughter is dead. He, Jairus had doubters. Jairus had folk who was pressing up against him. I can't tell you how many times I've seen my daddy come in here and preach when he didn't want to preach. Lay hands on people. And he probably needed laid hands on himself. I can't tell you how many times I've seen him hug and kiss people that we knew were talking about him. That's integrity. That's a man who lives in the worship and the praise of almighty God. Man of God, be an example today. Allow the love of God to, sh to shine through you. Genesis 22, uh, uh, Abraham built an altar and told his servants, uh, I'm taking Isaac and we're going to go worship the Lord. But Abraham knew that God had told him, I need you to go sacrifice Isaac. But Abraham, the Bible says, was strong in faith. He was not shaken. He said, I'm going to take my son. I'm going to take my boy. And I'm going to show him what it means to worship God. I'm going to teach him what it means to build an altar. I'm going to show this boy what it means to walk by faith. Even when you don't understand God, even when everything on the inside of you is twisting, you better stand fast and do what God told you to do. So there stood Isaac on the, on the altar bound and saw God provide a ram in the bush and perform a miracle out of way, out of no way. I'm here to tell you today, be vulnerable to your children. Open up and let them see you do faith exploits. Let them see you pr uh, profess the word. Let them see you be steadfast. Let them see God move in your house. Let them, what a testimony. I watched my daddy uh, walk around houses. I watched him pray and lay hands on cars and watch it come forth. I watched him take seed and say, son, I'm, I'm going to take this seed. I'm taking your deposit money for your Christian school. I'm going to sow it. But guess what? I promise you, you're going to start school. Everything's going to be all right, but you got to trust daddy. This is how we get our bills paid. This is how we get our needs met. I'd watch him with tears in his eyes, cry out and say, father, I love you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I praise you and I bless you. I watched him. I watched him bless people. I watched him give people cars. I watched daddy give people shoes. I watched daddy give people, give people coats and, and shirts and that put love on the inside of me that put faith on the inside of me that built me to say you know what that's what it means to be like Jesus that's what it means to serve Jesus we're not talking about standing behind here we're talking about living in life he said he said go into all the world and reach and that's what God has called us to do man of God take your children soul winning when you're out in the restaurant, I know we're eating ice cream, but waitress, there, there's something God has me to, me to say to you. And allow God to speak to you. Allow God to groom you. Allow God to shape you as you shape your children. I've never seen them panic in any situation. Oh, well, the pastor didn't call me. You know what it would be like if my father got on the phone and, and he said, um, was Lord, yes, son, everything all right? I just want you to know that don't be afraid. I know they got the coronavirus going on right now, but everything gonna be all right. And daddy's here. That, that would be an insult to me. I better know what's going on. We get offended. We get, we get upset when, when things don't go our way or we feel like pastor should have done this or pastor should have had lunch with me and, and pastor should have done this. and. My spiritual, he's my spiritual father. Well, guess what? Uh, there's there's, there's a, 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 a season and a, and a place and a relationship where that comes to. And you might have an acid test. He might not have called because God told him not to call. Because he want to grow you and get you out of your emotion and get you out of your flesh. 
God brings you here to grow you. God brings you to faith, soldiers, word, ministries to get you to a place of spiritual maturity. That's not the place for babes. When you come here and if you're a baby, we're going to get that bottle up out your mouth. We're going to get that diaper off your butt and you're about to walk. You're about to walk in greatness. You're about to walk in, in what God has called you to. You're about to walk in faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. That's not just something pretty that we say. No, that's the truth. We, we walk on faith over here. We're not scared over here. We're not punks over here. We don't, we don't cave in. We don't quit. There's nothing that we cannot do or obtain by the faith of Almighty God. And if you're a son of this house, if you're a daughter of this house, man, the, there, there's tenacity. There's faith. There's, uh, there's a, I don't quit. I'm not, I'm, no, you don't, devil. You punk, you bow-legged, bamboo cock out of rice thing. Get out of this house. Yeah. You might not go to Scott Jaguar, but maybe you go to uh, Link, uh, Town and Country Ford and you drop off the, uh, off the lot. That's where we started, Town and Country Ford. You don't need most. Stop looking for what's in your hand and what's in your wallet and what's in your pocket, man. Walk in faith. Step out in faith. Try God, sir. He, he going to meet you. When, when, when you step out, you're not going to sink, I promise you. When you get out, you're going to step up. Stir it up, sir. Pray in the Holy Ghost, sir. Worship God, sir. Stand fast, sir. You are well able to destroy this giant. The angel of the Lord told Gideon, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, man of battle, valor. For the Lord and for Gideon. For the Lord and for Jerry. For the Lord and for Sheldon. For the Lord and for Carl. For the Lord, and I don't know people's names, but for the Lord and for you. God is with you. Number four, I'm going to wrap this up. A man of God handles his responsibilities. My father took good care of me. He still takes good care of me. Handles responsibilities. Yes, sir. God has given you children. If he's given you a wife, if you buy yourself, it doesn't matter. He is the provider. Amen. You need to live in fear. Or try to work and get five jobs. Try to make stuff happen. No, no. That's not how you do it, sir. Let the Holy Spirit breathe into you the instructions. He will give you step by step by step. He will not lead you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. A father handles his responsibilities. So don't be afraid of that. Don't shy away from that. Don't run from that, but embrace that. And allow God to bless you your family through you. He will far exceed anything you can try to do. God will double, triple that. You don't need to get a paper route. You ain't got to drive Ubers and, and, and whatever you're doing. Let God, let God provide your family through you. Trust him. Trust God with your finances. So seed and watch what God does. He called you. He anointed you. He equipped you. So he will provide you. I'm going to end in Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 1 through 2 is in the Amplified. He says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. That is, accept their guidance and their discipline as his representatives, as his representative. Your spiritual father is God's representative. Your natural father is God's representative. You can't pick your spiritual parents. You can't pick your natural parents. Uh-oh. I'm running out of time, so I can't go there. But, but just trust me, you, you, can't, you can't do that. Um, and, uh, but this is right. This is right. Honor your father and your mother. It's the first commandment with promise that it can be well with you. That it is well with you. Love your father today. Honor that man today. Stop disrespecting. Stop saying what he is and what he isn't and what he can't do. No, receive him and respect him for the man of God that he is in the season and the level that he's on. And don't compare him to any other man, but see him through the eyes of Jesus. Blessed Father's Day, sir. I salute you. Daddy, I salute you. I honor you and I bless you. What a man of God you are. What a blessing you are to me. God loves you. You are being encouraged today. I stir up the gift 
on the inside of you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue of judgment that rises up against you, we condemn right now in the name of Jesus. I set you free from sugar diabetes. I declare you will live long and live strong. Your, your cells will continue to be vibrant and youthful. You're not getting old. You are not being forgotten about. You are not being pushed over to the side. No, you are still relevant. You still got something special. You still have something to offer and we receive you and we love you. Blessed Father's Day. But God said that's all right. Don't think that that's in vain because I've got something for you. You'll shine in the midst of whatever it is that confronts your life. Now, the person that sent this to me, <laughs> I just want to read the rest of it. And they said, uh, I meant to send this to you a uh, day ago. And they said, my daddy and my mama will glow like stars forever. And then this person says, you have put a lot of people on the right path. Yeah. And I showed it to Michelle and it was very, very encouraging. Very, very encouraging. I have been encouraged today. What about you, Daddy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was a rhema word. It was a word tailor-made by the Holy Spirit. If for nobody else, especially for me. <laughs> uh, 
I don't have very much to say today, and I can see why, but I did learn something today. I can start being out of church a little more often on Sunday. <laughs> and me and my woman can go to Arizona on Sunday if we want to, or the Rockies or somewhere. Uh, if you have a father, a natural father, like he just said, whether he's an alcoholic or whatever the case may be, you still have a responsibility to love that man, to encourage him. Because you're the Christian, so you should be the bigger person anyway. I didn't get the uh, opportunity to experience being fathered by a man. So God taught me how to father Terrell. And I'll say this and then I'll be finished. If you'll do it the Bible's way, if you'll learn from the scripture how to parent as a daddy, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. And keep your flesh out of the way and just do it the Bible's way. And I want to say to mothers, encourage him when he make mistakes. Celebrate him. Let him know what kind of job he's doing. It'll be good for the children in that household. Okay? All right, will you bow your heads for a moment, please? I want to give this opportunity to someone in the room here that's not born again, someone in the room here who has uh, strayed, maybe, gotten out of the will of God, need to come back to Jesus. He didn't leave you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you, but I'll be with you always. Or if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, spoken with other tongues as the Spirit of God give the utterance. Or if you're without a church home and believe that God have led you to this place, then we want to give you the opportunity to take advantage of these requests. If you're not saved, you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus. I need to know Jesus. I want to give Jesus my heart today. I need to be saved. I need to be born again. I'm ready to come out of the wilderness. If you're that person or persons, you're sitting here today, and that's you. This is your time. This is your opportunity. Right where you're sitting, if that's you and you know that you need to give Jesus your heart. You need to give him your life. The Bible says, come unto me, all ye that are labored and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm meek and lowly in heart. You will find rest unto your souls. If that's you, my friend, right where you're sitting. Just lift your hand up before the Lord. Do it now. Do it now. I see that hand. Just lift your hand up before the Lord. We're not going to embarrass you. That's not what this is about. This is about being delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Secondly, if you've strayed, you know you've gotten off in your prayer life, you hadn't been reading your Bible, you hadn't been worshiping God, your relationship has just become shattered by so many different things. You can change that today. He said, return unto me and I'll return unto you. God is here. He's full of love. And he's ready to receive you back unto himself. If that's you right where you're sitting, you say, Pastor, I need prayer. I want to rededicate and recommit my life back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you pray for me? Will you pray with me? If that's you right where you're sitting there, just slip your hand up in the air. We'll acknowledge that hand and have prayer with you right now. I see that hand. Thank you. God bless you. Praise God. Anyone else? Thirdly, if you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit, if you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit, the evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit is that they spake with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. This is a weapon. A weapon that Satan don't have any combat for. 
you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Or if you need to be refilled, we want to pray with you today. Say, Pastor, I'm not filled. I want to be filled. Or I was filled, but I stopped praying in other tongues and I believe I need to be refilled. If you're that person, a person right where you're sitting, just slip your hand up in the air. We'll acknowledge that I see that hand. God bless you. Thank you. I need to be refilled. I need to be filled. I need to be refilled. And then last of all, we uh, have gone through a transition in this ministry, and it's a good transition. It's a God brief transmission <laughs> and transition. <laughs> Transition and transmission. I like both of those words, and we've experienced both of those. <laughs> then we want to open up and invite you to come on and be a part of this vision, this ministry. Get connected with what God is doing here. Make this your home. Make this leadership your leadership. Make this vision your vision. Put your hands to something and begin to move in the direction God has taken us. Be a part of what he's doing. Receive what he's pouring out. Say, preacher, I don't have a church home, and I believe God is dealing, has dealt with, and is continuing to deal with me about connecting here. If that's you, and you want to do that today, right where you're seated, just lift your hand up before the Lord and We'll acknowledge that hand, those hands. You can do it now. Do it now, right now, in the name of Jesus. All right, if you held your hand up for either four of those requests, I want you to make your way down here to where I am. Go ahead and just get up out of your seat and make your way down. Here to where I am. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's welcome them and love on them. Glory to God. Praise God. Come on down here, young lady. If there's anybody else and you didn't raise your hand, you can still come. You can still come. You can still come. Put your hands together, saints. Let's, in, let's encourage people to still come. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Now, you know, when people make a decision like this, it's evident that the Holy Spirit have dealt with their hearts. And because of that, that means that they're now yielded. They're now yielding their hearts to the voice of the Spirit of Almighty God to receive whatever was lacking or missing, whatever was broken, they're saying, I want to come and get that fixed. You know, they, there's, an old, there's an old gospel song, I think it's a quartet song, Jesus will fix it. <laughs> How many of y'all know he's a fixer? <laughs> Glory to God forevermore. Praise God. Uh, I need a volunteer, a uh, Portia, will you come? And yes, yeah, I want you to take this young lady in that room right there, the CTM room, and I want you to lead her in the baptismal of the Holy Spirit. You took that, that, that class, didn't you? That ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> Go ahead with her. If you, if you need some assistance, Portia, let us know. We won't get a fee up now. All right? Now, you've never given Jesus your heart? You have? Okay, so you raise your hand for salvation. You want to rededicate your life back to the Lord. Is that what you're saying, or what was your request? Don't let me talk you into anything. So am I right? Okay. And right here as well. Move down here a little closer. We'll do both of you all together. How many of y'all believe that there can come a time in a Christian's life that they might get out of fellowship with God and need to go back and repent and ask God to bring them back to that fresh place 
that place of life and power and glory and renewal. So that's what's going to take place right here today with these two people. So set your faith with ours. Set your agreement with ours. And let's just go ahead and minister to them. I'm proud of both of you. Thank God for your courage and for your boldness. And thank God for not allowing pride to keep you from acknowledging that I need to get back to where I used to be. You follow what I'm saying to you? So just lift your hands before the Lord as an act of surrender. And I want you all to agree and pray with us as we go over this prayer together. I want you to say the prayer with them to encourage them even the more so, okay? I want the both of you to say this. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm so sorry that I separated myself from you and began to walk in my own will. I come before you with godly sorrow. You said that godly sorrow is true repentance. So today I repent. And in faith I say, please forgive me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for never leaving nor forsaking me. So therefore I return unto you with a broken heart that only you can heal. Restore me back to your marvelous love. Renew me with the freshness of your spirit. And I declare before this congregation the angels and the devils that I am back home in Jesus name come on and rejoice then. you got that didn't you <laughs> come on and rejoice 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 come on and rejoice glory to God rejoice praise God do we have some material on that I want you all to take these two uh pieces of material. Those are some scriptures that you can read and meditate that's going to fortify and build you up and main, cause you to maintain what you've done today. All these scriptures here pertain to really coming back to the Lord. So as you meditate on them, they'll establish in your stability and a strength that we all need actually, but God will do something now. Wonderful. I believe it when it's like a muscle that's been broken. Doctors would tell you a muscle that's been broken, once it begins to mend and heal, it comes back twice stronger than what it was. I believe the two of you are going to be twice stronger than what you were in the Lord originally. Amen. All right. You all can take your seat. Praise God. Go ahead and sit down if you will, please. Can, can, can we have a little bit of music here just for a moment? Just, just for a moment. Can y'all just kind of sit there and just worship the Lord a little bit quietly? Like, can I, can I have some worship music, please, son? I need to do something before I, before we leave here. Got to obey the Holy Ghost. All right. Kind of pray in the Spirit a little bit here, if you will. Si bla, hey, mangalegu, sekiri kiri bundai. Ha, yolo sokoto sakinde. Ese bidi bikiri. We turn that music up just a little bit, not loud, but just a little bit more. Oh, le kete, kekete, sekete. Shalalebu shekende sakapa. Shobrakiki pokuko mogunda. Uh, you come and stand right there. For save the Lord, there are times of promotion. There's times of season change. And there's times of honor. 
But in all of that progression, there will be times of opposition. You didn't get saved when you wanted to get saved. You got saved when I birthed you in your mother's womb. For it was in the beginning that I purpose to fulfill my call and I purpose to fulfill my purpose, says the Lord, in your life. But in that progression and in taking those steps, you moved in some directions that I did not ordain. And because of that, there were hindrances. Not only just hindrances, says the Lord, but there was also opposition. Opposition that discouraged. Opposition that even made you cry and weep and wonder why. Well, said God, I allowed some of it to build you. I allowed some of it to make you strong for the time and the season that I'm bringing you into now. Had you not gone that way, you wouldn't be where you are now. Had you not endured those storms, you wouldn't be walking in what you're walking now. I have something special for you, my son, says the Lord. And nobody and nothing, not even you, will blow it this time. This is a new day. This is a new era. This is a new season. And this is a new time. I sent you here for such a time as this. My priority for sending you here was to fix some things that have been broken and to reveal some things that you've not tapped, that you will tap in this house. It's only then will I be able to launch you into the broad, wide place of being a vessel that can be used by me and for my glory, says the Lord. Now your family got shattered by some things of the past and have become stifled and stagnant. But it will be your voice and the anointing that I'm entrusting to your life that will resurrect them and raise them up, fortify them, and bring them back into that place of renewal. God told me to lay my hands on you this day and that you would begin now to experience in the spirit a realm of glory a realm of power that you've never experienced in your entire life son will you come and hold his mic please eh. this is a transference people of God this is a transference of preparation for this young man's life. And the Lord has given me the green light to release it. Hold my mic here. I lay hands on you in the mighty name of Jesus. And the hands that I lay on you this day will not only point you into your destiny, but will launch you into your destiny. Receive this anointing. Take it now. Come on, shout with him. Shout with him. Praise God with him. Praise God with him. Come on, praise God with him.
Thank you for joining us on today's telecast. The vision of this ministry is that the whole man and the whole family is built up and perfected. If you're in the Charlotte area, we invite you to come and experience the difference and join us at one of our worship experiences. For more information on our location, service times, and ministries, visit faithsoldiers.org today. You can even let us know you're coming. Make sure to take a quick second and connect with us on social where you'll receive ministry updates and inspiring posts by Dr. Carl Turner. Simply search and follow at Faith Soldiers and at Carl Turner Ministries. Even send us a message and tell us how we can pray for you. Finally, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, then please prayerfully consider becoming covenant partners with this ministry. Visit CarlTurnerMinistries.org for more and tune in next week for another life-changing word with Dr. Carl Turner.